Hey, hey, you guys, thanks for watching Decor with my favorite groomer on YouTube. So I am about to do a house call, and it's a brand new client. Uh, there's some information I get from her before I head out. We've talked a few times now. She texted me vaccinations today. I'm very stickler on what I do for a living. So I require rabies, DHPP, and Bordetella to come to the salon. I require rabies and DHPP to go mobile grooming. Uh, that protects me. And if you don't know about Parvo, look it up. If you don't know about kennel cough, look it up. Uh, there's, if you don't know about why, look it up. Rabies, you should want rabies on any pet you work with. If the pet bites you and the pet gets turned in, it doesn't have rabies. It's a whole nother scenario for the pet owner. So just to require such a, such a legal vaccination is so easy to do. Um, and then explain the rest on why you, that's a whole other video, but explain the rest on why you require these. Those are the ones I've chosen. There's a hundred different vaccines, a lot of many vaccinations that you can give. Those are the ones that I require that I feel safe requiring, okay? Me personally. That's the best I can do because I can't say that everything, every vaccination is going to do anything for anything, right? But those are i can say look I, i've tried to protect myself and the pets that come in here this is the best i can do this is that's what i've done so this client and i talked on the phone a few nights ago actually pretty late at night and i'm going to just kind of read her text message here so you can kind of get a feel so phone conversation today she texted me she actually texted me this morning she said yesterday but oh it was yesterday at 10 20 she texted me the vaccination records and then today she texted me again so she was pretty ur urgent, like, hey, I really want you, right? So a couple, three or four days ago, we talked. And in my head, she kept saying, I want mobile grooming, I want mobile grooming. But this is an 18-year-old border collie. And she kept saying things like, this is what, I'm listening and I've been doing this 15 years. So I, I, I'm analyzing and I work with senior pets. That's like majority of senior disabled aggressives. So I'm thinking to myself, everything she's saying, put it down, write it down so you can look back and think, hmm, analyze the situation she kept recalling uh, all three of us we can have three people help you hold her up and stuff like that key words okay key words to trigger how you're going to handle the groom where you should groom she wanted mobile but i'm thinking there's not a lot of room in the trailer to have all of us you know doing this all three you know what all that so i'm thinking in my head and and uh, no uh, no mobile grooming you have to come to me i'll shut my salon down for you to do a one-on-one -on -one private, but you you gotta come here if we gotta have three people holding your dog, you know? And I said, well, what do you guys normally do? She's like, we always shave her down. She's always such and such, happy in this and that, but loves the bows, loves it, you know, always prissy, prissy, and love, you know, just happy. This mom knows her dog. And again, the mom says, I say, some of y'all don't listen to the videos. You're really missing a whole lot if you're gonna judge what I do, because if you don't listen, then you would be a, I think that if you don't listen to your, if you don't listen in life, you're missing so much and prejudging. So if you don't listen to what I'm telling you, then you have no idea why I did the cut I did. So with this pet parent, she's, I'm taking tons of notes, man. Then I don't sit here and just listen and go, yeah, I'll be right there. No, none of that it is. It takes a minute to check in a client with me and to get all the facts. I need the facts before I make you a price range, right? And a yes or no, can I help you? Are we on the same page? We have to be on the same page or not because you might come in one time and be like, oh, we are not on the same page. So this pet parent says she weighs 50 pounds. She has, a, she has lost a lot of weight since her last visit, since she is terminally ill. We want to make this easy for her. There will be two to three people to help you lift, etc. And I'm thinking, what? You know, and she said this to me on the phone the other night too. So I, mental note, said it twice. She, and then today she said, can you please take her as a mobile groomer appointment, question mark, please, in all caps. So I said, look, I'm gonna call you. And we had already talked, but now I'm gonna really call her and let's, let's really talk again. So I'm about to go to her house. We talked extensively. She called me while she was at work. Um, the pet's name is Betty. Again, she's a border collie. She's 18 years old. I've been grooming like coconut, 20 something, you know, old dogs. And there's things that you need to know how to do to work with those types of pets. Calls that you're gonna make that you're gonna not do something or you are gonna do something or we need to do that first. So they're willing to do, she, she even said, Dee Dee, 
we had a dog, or they have, that she still, I said, is your pet still alive? She goes, yeah. She said, we have a dog that we removed, had her kidney removed. And at the end of the day, it cost us $7,000. So I can tell you right now, not all of you and not a lot of groomer clients that I have are going to spend that kind of money. Okay. So this is the type of client and they're brand new clients. This is the type of client. She said, I want you to know this Dee. This is how important our dogs are to us. So I want someone that knows how to work with a senior pet and we are willing to call and pay what we need to pay. Okay. And it's not about money, but I'm telling you what she's telling me. And I said, it's going to be around this much money to come in for a private one hour grooming and a senior pet that may not stand up at all during the grooming. It may be this amount of money. And I said, but w listening to everything you're telling me, 18 years old, and I've honestly not seen a lot, of, I can't even name one, Border Collie at 18 years old. So we may already be pushing our limit of lifespan. So the last thing I want to do is come in and do a blow drying and a shave down and do all these things and bring that heart like, and that, that dog has a heart attack that night. So my call is going to be this. I said, okay, let's, let's back up. Let's take this in stages. I don't know what we're dealing with. And I said, honestly, let me just come out there. Are you willing to pay for an X dollar toenail trim to your home? I won't bring a trailer or nothing like that. I'm just going to come out. We're going Cause she kept saying like she couldn't stand, need her comfortable things I'm picking up on. So it is, we're going to do a nail trim. And I asked her, can I record it? And she said, yes. So I'm going to take y'all with me. We're going to go do this nail trim. She's about 35 minutes away, so I need to get going. But uh, we did same day because I was able to work her in. When I hear the need and I have the time, I try to do my best for folks. Uh, it can't always be like that. If you are doing that, you'll probably see that the, she may call me next time and try to do the same day thing again. By the time she comes back in, it might not be, you might, we not, might not be able to do that. But in this circumstance, today, this one, I can do it, right? I can make this happen. So we're going to head on out. And when I get there, I'll try to grasp it in a video. She said, uh, Betty is super calm. She's super sweet. Her nails are ridiculously long. She said Betty was her dad's dog and her dad is not doing well. So they took Betty in and have been taking care of her. But she did say, I want to take care of my baby. I don't want nothing to happen to her. So I said, well, maybe the first thing that we're going to do is not throw her in a tub and do all this, all this other stuff, shaving and all that. So that's where we're at. <laughs> Let's head out. So we got Betty here and we're going to start off. We're going to just do a nail trim. I'm going to actually check her coat. I'm thinking she does have some matting and that we'll probably do oh, want to do the shave down. You see what I'm seeing yeah, here? Yeah, I'm seeing. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. I know on the phone you were like, no, not at all. But I'm thinking that that probably all has, is um, pretty tight there. Yeah, it's tight, but yeah. I didn't think, I'm thinking of the toilet. Okay, so we're going to do a toenail trim here. And mom, you're going to help me, right? So you're going to, yeah. you're okay? Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna get my nail clippers out here. You wanna put her on the coffee table? Would that be easier for you? Put her on the coffee. No, we can lay her down. Let's lay, lay her down here. Okay. Right. Come on, baby. Come on, babies. So we're gonna do a nail trim just to get her, uh, get the nails off the ground, and then kind of analyze, you know, if we should have her come in or. Okay. Hi. Can I can I get in there? Hi. Can you sit, sweetie? Sit. She can't hear either. You can't hear. I can. I know you can feel my vibration talking though. You want to do it on the carpet? Hmm? Come here. Come here, baby. Oh. Give her a big hug, Mom, and uh, maybe I'll get in there like that, and then she'll probably kind of release on you, just kind of lay on, lay on she you. She knows something's up. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Do you want to get her laying down, or do you want to hold like that? Because standing up is fine with me, too. I just I want to do what's most comfortable. Okay. All right, so let me see here. So we're going to do it like this. I really needed to get in here to find out what we are working with because mom wanted to do shave down, but again, like she's got this 18 year old pet. Okay, so stay there for me. Keep her head over there for me, though.
keep your guard up. Just in case, sometimes trigger some kind of. Sometimes just. There we go. One of them is an Australian Shepherd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can't even tell, man. Yeah, all they've done the same characteristics. They've all been adopted. Really? Yeah. Really relaxed, right? Real great, good state. Yeah. She's always been great. great. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's alright. It's alright. It's right, right there. Right. Heart failure? Yeah. yeah. All the time. Yeah. Is your doorbell still uh, connected? Mm -hmm. Disconnected. Well, she can't hear anyway very well. It's when the other dogs. You're saying that. That's right. Yeah. When the other dogs act, this is when she acts out. Oh, okay. It's alright. All right. It's alright. We are all done with the nail trim, so she wants to. Yay! Yeah. Good job. There we go. All right. So, all right. Me and mom are gonna talk. Thanks for watching. I appreciate y'all. you guys so uh went over there and we checked out the border collie nails were really really long uh cur not curling but uh out there like out being spread back that means the nails are hitting the floor and pushing out because there's nowhere for them to go okay the nails don't stay like this they start to go like that okay that's what ends up happening with toenails and that okay so the nails are here right because there's the pad can't touch the ground so then the pad needs to touch the ground. So instead of going up, they start to curl. Sometimes they do go up, but they'll start to curl and flatten out and curl out. Then the pad can touch the ground. And at the same time, so now the arm is like this, right? It goes up to the shoulder. So all the pain up here, it spikes up. It goes all the way up to the body line and all that stuff. Okay, so that's just common sense. You may not have thought about that ever, and I get that a lot. And we just think that they're just nails, but they're not. They're, they do a lot more than that, and they affect a lot more than that. So here it is. It's like ready for me to really go home. It's like almost 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, and I kind of wanted to come out and wrap everything up on what we decided to do at the household. Pet parent was kind enough to let me into her home and record our session. She said, please, you know, don't... Uh, and, and um, she's like, please don't put my picture, my face and stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, no problem. She goes, yeah, I appreciate it. And I was like, no problem. But uh, we, she agreed to let me record everything. I always ask. If you didn't know, you should always ask. I just ask because I want to. Uh, check your laws. Texas state law. Uh, you might want to, you know, Texas state law may be different than your state law. So d it depends on what you're doing out there and if you've gotten permission and you've got signatures, whatever. Or if you don't even need that, your state could have a different law like ours does. I do it as a consideracy, but it's not required. And it just depends on, it just depends. There's some fine tuning and the laws haven't caught up all the way with what we do. But just ask. Why not? Just ask and let them know. Some, the only reason I'm even saying that is because I know some of you don't think I ask, but we're past that. So she uh we the whole storyline and then we went over there same day oh my goodness i can't believe i do that to myself sometimes did the nail trimming only to see where we're at the impact it would have on the pet the pet's 18 years old so i'm going to try my best not to do anything to push that pet into like overdrive uh congenitive heart failure means the pet is on lots of meds during the day like all day every day the pet has meds i'm sure i lost two that way so i know about heart disease and the impact anything that makes the heart beat fast and she actually said, uh, 
I said something about the doorbell, right? But she goes, no, the, it's not the doorbell. The dog can hardly hear it, which is interesting. Uh, but the other dogs get her riled up. So maybe the other, other dogs might hear that doorbell and also start riling up, running around the house, and then she, it impacts her, okay? So there's a lot of things that we have to look at when we work with senior pets, and some of that is changing things, in my opinion. Um, I learned that from my mom, who was like, Didi, your dogs are getting pretty old now. They've been there for you your entire life. Now it's time for you to change a few things. If that means you have to sleep on the mattress on the floor for a while, because your pet can't jump anymore, then maybe that's what you should have done, you know, things like that. And I was like, hmm, food for thought. I wish I would have taken that thought into more consideration, uh, but as my pets have gotten older, now I get it. Uh, uh, several times, you know, where your pets are getting older, and it's just like, okay, it's time, it is, when your pets get older, it's time to change a few things. So, facts, right? Uh, things to think about if you have a senior pet, and as your pet gets older, things to just consider. So. I took her off the video and just had a chit chat with her and kind of see where she wanted to go with it. I said, here's some options. I really, really would prefer you come to the salon. If you come to the salon, it's just a, uh, I have room, right? In the mobile grooming unit, yeah, there's room, but it's just more conflicting. In a situation where we want it calmer and quieter and more peaceful. And she's not that far. I think it took me, you know, 18 minutes to get there, but there was lots of traffic. So imagine a, a just a regular drive. It shouldn't be that long. The downfall was that she said she always vomits. So I told her to uh, swaddle her baby. <laughs> like I told her, get help. Um, I could probably lift her, but she is a larger dog. Uh, but you want to wrap her up. So she feels like she's a really bundled up. And someone get in the back with her and ride with her. It is this is this is senior pet care. This is not regular pet care. Okay, you have to change and tweak some things based as off based off what your pet's needs are during something that you're doing. Whether it's going to be going for surgery, going to have something removed, going to have nails done. No, these are all these things come into consideration when you have an 18 year old with congested heart failure. You are not going to treat that pet the same as any other pet, and we do that a lot here. Every situation is different, and everything that I do is not told to you, the public. Me and the pet parents sit and talk. Uh, you're never there. So you're never there for the whole thing. I kind of let you guys peek in and see the, 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 what we're doing, but you never get the whole story because you're not here. There's a lot that you're missing. So mom and I talked about how we wanted to go about it, the best way to do it. Uh, again, I'm going to recommend, and we are not going to blow dry her. I'm going to recommend it, but I'm... I'm my, my foot's down on the ground. We're not blow drying an 18 year old border collie. Not gonna do it. Mom said the pet was not matted at all. I could see the, the dog was matted as soon as I walked in there. I was, she's on the phone and I tell you these folks, I tell you these folks tell me this all the time. The pet's not matted and that's all, I hear that first. And then I'm like, okay, get your comb. So we get our comb out and I'm like, get your comb out and run that comb through the hair and tell me if it's matted. If it is not gonna run, ooh, that's coming through. No, if it's like, ah, 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 you know, it is matted. Different degrees of matting, but it is matted. So I looked at the coat and I was like, whew, I was like, that's matted. It may not be like some of the Shih Tzus that we've done, tangled and rock matted, but it is definitely not a dog we want to brush for a few hours. And when I talked to her on the phone, when she called me, she said, I said, well, what are you trying to get here? She goes, we always shave our pet. That came out of her mouth, had nothing to do with my idea. But I'll tell you this, if a dog's matted at 18 years old, what are you going to do? You're not going to brush that dog for two or three hours, bathe her, dry her, cage dry her, whatever you guys are doing out there, that's not what you're going to do. So we are coming in for a pet grooming. We're going to shave her down. We are not going to blow dry. And... We've scheduled her groom for a couple days from now. Whew, and I think it'll go really well. She did look like the nail trim put her to sleep. Like it was like, boom, she's laying there. So you never know what we might get. She might lay down the whole time. She might stand up for a while. Either way, excuse me, either way, mom's gonna be here. She's gonna, it's gonna be like a day off for her or anyway, she's gonna be here to assist. So that way we make sure that we can, she really, they really, really love their dogs, okay? They are going to do anything for the dog that they need to do. I don't know, I didn't go into it, and I don't think you would have either, but I did ask, she mentioned again, like, yeah, this is my dad's dog, and so 
I said, is dad still here? And she said, no, dad's not here. And I said, I'm, I'm very, very sorry to hear that you lost your dad. And so this was not her pet, okay? She has some other pets in there. All kind of look the same. I was like, are they all Border Collies? She's like, no, one's Australian Shepherd and two Border Collies. And, one, and this was my dad's uh, pet. So her dad's not here with, with us anymore. Life is just really short, you guys. You better live it up. Um, you better be positive. Mm. Life is very short. So uh, she's taking care of her dad's dog and she, the dog, means so much to the family. So she doesn't want to do anything that would, not the harm is not the right word, but she doesn't want to do anything to just make it a hard place for the dog, okay? The dog already has congested heart failure. She's in, she wants the dog to be comfortable. She doesn't want the dog to be dirty or matted, but they've waited quite a while and decided that we have to we have to do something, okay? We still need to groom her. She still needs to be clean. So that's where they have um, found me. And I am very grateful to have these opportunities to be able to help these dogs. And I, I, I have very real conversations with folks that have a senior pet like this. I told her, this is what I would do. And this may or may not be our last groom together. So we're not gonna make it like the I said, do you want, I said, it's a, not that it's even a choice, but to explain it. The process is usually I rough the dog in, we bathe and dry the pet, hand dry, no cage drying, and then we rough the dog out, do a whole groom all over again. So in her case, I would prefer we just rough her in and bathe her and she goes home and she air dries. She's not here for very long, it's low key. It's already gonna be a tough groom because it's the skin is matted, you know, the hair is matted. So, do, and she goes, yep, that's all I want. That's all we want. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be off. She needs to be comfortable and low maintenance. And the dog is not harmed. You know, the dog no, doesn't go under extra, m more extra pressure than needed. It is going to go through some stuff. Dematting a dog and shaving all the mats off is not uh, dematting, brushing the hair, but it's still pretty painful, you know. So we'll see how she does. There's our recap, and we'll be back when we start to groom. Thanks so much for watching.